There is a concerning trend in the car market, and we need to talk about it. Last week, the Federal Reserve released a quarterly report outlining the current U.S. consumer debt situation. And while I do have a video planned for later this week about the entire report and what this means for the car market and the economy, in this video, I want to focus on the car data specifically, outlined by not only just the Federal Reserve, but also other sources as well regarding a whole slew of information that you really need to know if you're somebody who's looking to buy a car this year. Now, first, let's talk about some good news. Now, the good news here is that used car prices are set to continue to go down in 2024, and new car prices are set to stabilize this year. And even though we're only in the second month of the year, believe it or not, we're already beginning to see this stabilization take place. Used car prices are down 9.4% year over year, and while new car prices are up year over year by 2.4%, they're currently sitting at $48,759, dealership incentives are increasing. And this is great news and it tells us a few things. Number one, that demand for cars is going down. And this in turn is forcing dealerships and car sellers to either A, lower their prices, or B, sweeten the deal with some sort of incentive in order to get somebody to buy. These are two things that we didn't really see in 2021 or 2022, so the fact that we are seeing it today is excellent news. And while don't get me wrong, this is excellent news, the problem is, is that we had previously had nearly four years of skyrocketing car prices and increasing auto loan debt. And unfortunately, even though we do have good news to report in 2024, it looks as though a lot of the damage has already been done. And unfortunately for many vehicle owners, lowering car prices in 2024 doesn't really help the situation at all. In fact, in many cases, it actually makes it a bit worse. But to really understand why this is the case, we have to look at the full picture. And let's first take a look at loan originations outlined by this Federal Reserve report that I mentioned earlier. The average loan origination amount, so the amount that consumers are borrowing for a car, has been steadily increasing for the last decade or so, increasing by about 1% per year between 2015 and 2019. By the first quarter of 2020, the average amount borrowed for a car was $18,000. But this number skyrocketed in 2021 by 11% and grew another 10% in 2022. So the amount that people are borrowing for their car purchases increased more between 2021 and 2022 than it had the previous five years. And by the end of 2022, the average amount borrowed for a car loan was $24,000. And this brings us to current outstanding car debt of $1.61 trillion. A large portion of this $1.61 trillion was taken out during a time where Americans had more money to spend. Stimulus due to the pandemic meant that consumers had more money in their pockets, and this meant that in addition to saving or spending this money on necessities, some people opted to buy things like new cars with this money, which you can see here in this graph which breaks down the categories outside of savings or necessities that were most frequently spent on during the pandemic. The problem though is that pandemic stimulus has run out, personal savings is dwindling, and credit card debt is stacking up. And as a result, people are beginning to fall behind on their car loan. Auto loan delinquency transition rates have surpassed pre-pandemic levels for the first time since the pandemic. These are loans that are not just simply late, but they are on the verge of becoming delinquent, transitioning into delinquency. And you can see that this delinquency status is affecting younger generations disproportionately, as well as low-income earners disproportionately. Car loans are going into delinquency at nearly the same rate as credit cards, a delinquency rate that is not only higher than pre-pandemic levels, but even begins to compete with 2008 levels. And this is a relatively new phenomenon, because if we look at the 90-day delinquency for auto loans, they aren't nearly is bad, though they aren't great either. So it definitely seems as though between Q3 of 2023 and Q4 of 2023, which is what this report is reflecting, there has certainly been a turn with consumers, and consumers are beginning to fall behind at a higher rate on their debt. I also want to emphasize that this is all at a time whenever student loan delinquency rates are at an all-time low, and they have been for a number of years now due to the pandemic. Over the last 10 years, student loans have averaged about a 10% delinquency rate, but since the pandemic, they have hovered in the 1% rate. Range. Now, I don't know if student loan delinquency rates will ever return to that 10% mark, given the fact that student loan forgiveness is definitely a hot button topic in this current climate. Really, nobody knows exactly what the future is going to hold, but I think we can all agree on the fact that it isn't going to stay at 1% either, and we can definitely expect it to increase. The question is how much. And there are many reasons why we can almost guarantee that student loan delinquency rates will in fact go up. One of these reasons is well illustrated in a survey done by CNBC last year, which found that 56% of student loan borrowers say that they'll have to choose between groceries and student loan payments. The data point here point to the conclusion that car buyers in 2021, 2022, and even in 2023 bit off more than they can chew when it came to car purchases. They borrowed too much money, they made their car payments too high, and they purchased a too expensive of a car. And now, as a result, 
because car buyers are falling behind. And this brings us to what I mentioned earlier when I said that a falling car market in this current climate is actually bad news for many borrowers that are falling behind on their car payments. Because unlike in 2021 and 2022, when you could very easily sell a car for more than you paid for it because of insane demand, those days are long over. And today, cars are worth anywhere between 10 to 20% less than they were in 2021 and 2022, if not more. Which is really bad news if you're somebody who has a car that you can't afford, but now you can't really sell that car because chances are you owe more on that car than the car is actually worth. According to Edmonds, for car owners who have negative equity on a car, meaning they owe more than the car is worth, the average amount of negative equity held is $5,902 for new cars and $5,026 for used. I want to emphasize that this is not the average amount amount of equity that car loan holders have across the car market as a whole. It is just the amount of negative equity that people have who have negative equity. So this does not take into account the people that have positive equity. It is also important to note that while this is the highest amount that we've seen in recent years for negative equity, the actual number of accounts that have negative equity are going down. So less car borrowers overall are currently affected by negative equity, but the ones that are are affected in a more extreme way. This is actually really interesting because this same trend is seen with third-party collections, which doesn't even include auto loans. The amount of people with third-party collections is the lowest that we've seen it, but the average amount in third-party party collections is the highest we've seen it. This is indicative that as of right now, collections and delinquencies are affecting individual groups of people more than others more specifically low-income Gen Z and millennials. And these groups of people are being affected more than, say, baby boomers, high-income earners, or Gen X. But because of the fact that there are these people that have pretty extreme negative equity, getting out of these car loans that they can no longer afford is an extremely tricky situation. The last time we saw negative equity this high was back in 2020, right at the start of the pandemic. And interestingly enough, according to Edmonds, the reason why we saw this negative equity so high during this period of time was because at the start of the pandemic, and really throughout the pandemic, interest rates were at record lows, and so you could get a car and pay virtually no money in interest. And at the very beginning of the pandemic, dealerships and car sellers were running crazy good incentives. So there was a surplus of people who took their car that they had negative equity in it, and they used low interest rates and high dealer incentives to get out of that car that they couldn't afford. And as a result, in 2020, we saw a spike in negative equity, but it was a temporary spike until now. But the problem is, is that that same out doesn't exist today. Interest rates are high, and even if rates do decrease in 2024, it's not going to go back to pre-pandemic levels this year. Car prices are falling, and the only way someone can really get out of a loan that they have negative equity in is either one, just stop paying it and let it get repossessed, b, trade it in for a cheaper car and absorb that negative equity with a lower car purchase, or c, keep it and drown themselves in the process. There really isn't a perfect solution here. And while the car market is predicted to stabilize and continue to go down in 2024, what happens if the job market gets worse? If the economy worsens? If car prices continue to go down more aggressively as a result? Well, everything discussed in this video will also get worse. Delinquency rates, repossessions, late payments. And this is, of course, bad news for anybody who's underwater on their car and they want to get out of that car payment or people who are falling behind on their car debt. It's actually pretty good news if you're somebody who's been sitting idly by waiting for the perfect time to buy a car. And while I don't know if I would wait until the economy crashes to make a large car purchase, because as I talked about in a somewhat recent video, I personally don't think that we'll see major swings in the economy this year due to the election. And right now, there are some pretty solid deals in the car market that could be worthwhile purchasing if you have the funds. I do think that at least being aware of this situation and being able to plan for it is something that everybody should be doing, at least keeping in the back of your mind. Because I do believe that in 2025 specifically, this will absolutely have an impact on the car market as a whole. And if you buy a car overpriced today, you will absolutely be paying the price of that in a year. And so I do think 2024 could be a good time to buy a below market value great deal vehicle that holds its value long term, it is absolutely not the time to buy a heavily depreciated overpriced vehicle because that vehicle will have a bad time in the next couple of years. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.